What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy B Hot Radio Shout in. Hey, man, I got a young man in this thing that's tearing up the TV, the big screen, and everything else as we speak. Miles True, what's good with it, boss? What's good, big guy? You straight? You man, straight? feeling good, feeling great. Now, I mean, Miles, first of all, I mean, I look up, I'm on Instagram, and all I see is Summer Walker handing you breakfast in this up, thing. So. Up, pull up. <laughs> <laughs> Life got to be good with that going on, man. Nah, Talk that was me. fun. That was fun filming. That was very on the fly, too. I really wasn't even supposed to. To film that video the mm. the crazy story about it is Meech just called me yeah and was like hey summer's uh model or love interest had canceled on her and yeah. um, she's looking for somebody and, and i didn't really think i was you know what i'm saying the fit for it but um <laughs> hey he saw something <laughs> different Come and, on. Um, and apparently at that time they was talking with each other so yeah. he was real cool that was real cool of him to like look out for me and look out for her at the same time and uh put us together in the video so it was fun though Miles, I mean, first of all, sir, you're on fire here in these streets, man. I mean, how are you dealing with all of this fame and attention that you got going on right now, boss? Fame is fame is a big word. I, um, maybe attention, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's cool being well-known, you yeah. know, walking walking down five points and the yeah. water boys fucking with me, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm from the east side and, okay. and I grew up on the west side doing okay. theater and stuff, so... yeah. I'm always at the West End Mall and getting my American Deli wings. And Come on now, Asian grandma. She already, she already with me all exactly. the time. You know, so it's cool though. I, I love being that local, you know, well-known person, and uh, it's it's fun. It's fun. When it comes to your, you know, artistic ability and stuff, at what point did you realize that, hey man, this acting thing is for me? When I couldn't play basketball and I didn't uh, have the opportunity to, my yeah. mom said I could do theater camp. <laughs> 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 and uh, I ended up jo enjoying it and learned the basics and logistics of just acting and enunciating my words. And like we exactly. were talking about earlier, just being comfortable in front of large audiences and being on stage and yeah. knowing you only have one opportunity not to mess up. And um, I transitioned that energy to film, and mm -hmm. uh, that's how I got here. Okay, BMF, man. B Mickey. Mm -hmm. I mean, what was that like playing that character for you? First of all, how did you even get the part on BMF? And mm -hmm. just take me uh, from that point right there. Well, um, the showrunner, Randy Huggins, yeah. um, he's he was watching me since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. Black Lightning, yeah. Queen Sugar, okay. um, even Atlanta, mm -hmm. and New Edition Story. And yeah. um, him just watching me as a kid, he just grasped like just a niche towards me and just like had a, a craving for what I had more yeah. um, in, in this industry in my career so um, he pitched um, I, th I, I think I first auditioned for Terry mm -hmm. and um, they sent me back the audition for B Mickey and mm -hmm. um, they loved it mm -hmm. and um, first season went down it was great I got the opportunity to have a little more camera time in my career yeah. um, being able to you know, just show my chops a little more. Come on and, um, now. And then the second season, it just really took off, and I love the response and reaction from the audience, you know, because mm -hmm. it's such a real story, and it's a true story as well, but it's a relatable story, too. Everybody that acts, though, Miles, don't get an opportunity to be a part of something that large. You see what I'm saying? Something that, you know, kind of takes television by storm. I didn't even know it was going to be that big. I didn't even know it was, like... It had the same impact New Edition story had for me. You know, I yeah. only knew about Belle Biv DeVoe. Yeah. You know, and the next thing I know, we do a three-night three biopic, and it has 24.7 <laughs> million views afterwards. You got five-year-olds singing Telephone Man. Come on. You know, so going you know, back to BMF, I only knew about the Rick Ross song, you know, I'm Big Meat. <laughs> Larry Hoover, you know, and um, just only hearing that and growing up hearing that as a kid, I never really, like, attached both stories together yeah. and understood where that really slogan came from. Exactly. And um, yeah, so th that, that was really cool. Similar to the New Edition story, that BMF story, you had to be there to understand. So New Edition, for my mama them and for my older uh, uncles and stuff like that, that was the Jackson 5 for them, okay? What? Oh yeah, I you bet it was. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that was the Jackson 5 for them. I was alive and well during the BMF time. I remember seeing all that stuff going crazy first mm. time. So it was like, no, that was a time to be alive in Atlanta. Yeah, so, you were here when they. So you were exactly. here when they came no, to I Atlanta. I was in college. I was 
that was during that crunk era that we was talking about earlier, yeah. man. I mean, the clubs was off the damn chain. Atlanta had never, Atlanta would never be the same as that right there because it was a party Monday through Sunday in this thing, okay? Mm. It was clubs lining up and down the streets. <laughs> Peachtree Street nigga was like Freak Nick back in the day still, and we would leave the club sweating, sir, okay? <laughs> yeah. You have on your long ass white tee, and you would leave that club with that thing stuck to your back. So, Okay, being in there and having to embody these characters and stuff like that, what was the training like getting prepared to play B. Mickey? And was it hard for you to grasp that character? Um, I wouldn't say it was hard. It was like it, it was uh, it was challenging. Yeah. As as an actor, you are portraying a person that that's not you twelve to fourteen hours out of your day every day for it could pertain to three months it could pertain to two years yeah and um when it comes down to that you only have eight to seven hours to come back home to go to sleep or be yourself yeah and sometimes you can lose yourself My in God. characters um Heath Ledger yeah. with the Joker you know come on now um Taraji B Henson and Hitty Fi- uh, Hidden Figures yeah. you know um so like w- with that being said uh I had to find myself and find the good accolades and the tributes with you know what I'm saying B Mickey not yeah. only he can cook crack but he was a cool person <laughs> exactly um he had swag yeah. you know he had charisma about yeah. him he had drive mm-hmm. um he was funny at that times you yeah. know uh and those things about him I could relate with okay you know and um I, w- I didn't have the fortunate opportunity to talk to the real person, yeah, you know, be Mickey like everybody else did to talk to their person, that the real person that they were portraying. But um, I just really had to just gain information from the dialogue and gain, gather more context as much as needed to just make the character real and relatable as a person that that they can watch it and see themselves in it. Be Mickey is a character that you see every day on on the corner, mm-hmm. and you never know what that person story that they go home to. Yeah. Or the people that they go home to, or experiences exactly. or situations that they go home to, exactly. and I was able to, you know, put that on display with that character. 